This is one of the hardest lists I've ever had to put together. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going through my top 10 favorite movie scores of all time. Now if you know me, you know I love a good movie score. In fact, if I go to my Spotify, the majority of stuff that I listen to are original scores composed for films, whether that's when I'm working out or just driving down the road in my car. I adore movie scores. So today I've compiled my 10 favorite movie scores of all time and sometimes I cheat on here and you guys will know what I mean by that in a second. But before I get into this thing, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite movie scores of all time, subscribe and hit that notification to help me reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel and check my patreon link down below for access to the discord server extra content all that good stuff anything goes a very long way but without further ado let's dive right in so coming in number 10 for me if my shirt didn't give it away already is the batman this is a score composed by michael giacchino who's obviously famous for doing lots of pixar work with up ratatouille the incredibles that man is a mastermind and he continues to show that here with the batman i remember when the theme dropped early like before the movie I couldn't stop listening to it. And normally I like refrain from listening to movie scores early, but I couldn't wait with this one. I listened to that Batman main theme so many times before the movie came out. And when I went in, it just, it blew me away. Every track hits, there's the Catwoman theme. The main Batman theme is my personal favorite. But throughout the entirety of this movie, the score is a character. And that's really something I look for in an all-time score. Does the score act like its own character in the movie? And that's the case with the Batman. Obviously, the main theme has its triumphant moments, but a lot of tracks add to the mystery of the film, as this is the first time we really see a straight-up detective Batman through and through. And, you know, there are moments where we see Batman investigating or trying to figure out some little detail of a crime. And the score will sort of guide us through that, creating this feeling of mystery. And all around, Giacchino really killed it with this score. That main Batman theme, bomb. Bum, 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 bum. That gets me hype every single time. I mean, I, I could listen to that right now, the four or five minute track, and by the end of it, like I'm ready to run a mile. Coming in at number nine for me is the score for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now this almost encapsulates the entirety of the Indiana Jones franchise. However, I feel as though Raiders has the strongest score out of all the movies. This is John Williams, of course, and spoiler alert, it's not the last time we're gonna talk about him here on this list, but Raiders March has become so iconic apart from the movie. If you were to play that anywhere, people would be like, oh, that's Indiana Jones. But it goes beyond that. You've got Marion's theme, the music that plays in the Well of Souls, the music that plays when Indy discovers the location of the Ark. Multiple moments where the score has its time to shine. It's got that John Williams flair to it with the trumpets that are gonna just blast your eardrums out, but at the same time add to that adventurous 80s fuel. Spielberg and John Williams are a match made in heaven. This is one of his more iconic scores. I mean, I could have put 10 John Williams scores. In fact, that's actually a video on my Patreon. One of my first ever videos is my top 10 John Williams scores. So if you want to watch that video, my Patreon is linked down below. Raiders of the Lost Ark was always going to be on this list. But taking into my number eight spot, we've got the score for The Social Network by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, an Academy Award winning score, actually. I'm honestly shocked that this score beat out one that I'm going to talk about later on this list. However, the score for The Social Network is one of the more unique scores I've ever heard. It's got this real techno vibe to it. My favorite track is in motion which plays in the first act of the film when Mark is like, yeah, it's on. And we see him start his coding. It's a really great score. But then you've got the track Hands Cover Bruise. There's different versions of it in the actual soundtrack. One of those plays during the Mark scene. You better lawyer up, asshole, because I'm not just coming back for 30%. I'm coming back for everything. So there are moments where it's got this techno upbeat vibe that really matches, obviously, the creation of Facebook and that high intensity with, you know, all the dialogue thrown in this film. But then at the same time, there are tracks that play into that somber feel of the movie. So all around, it's a masterful score. It won the Academy Award. I would have given it to another movie this year. We'll talk about later, but still, I adore that social network score. But next on my list, this is the first time I'm going to cheat in this video. I've got the Pirates of the Caribbean score for the entire trilogy, the first three movies. Now, I couldn't pick just one movie. I had to represent all three because to me, they're like one long story drawn out over three movies. Hans Zimmer is responsible for composing a lot of the music here, and the main Pirates of the Caribbean theme is up there with most iconic like movie themes of all time. I don't even know if that's up for debate. On the Curse of the Black Pearl soundtrack, there's a track called He's a Pirate. Whew! If you guys want to run through a brick wall, throw that on. You'll want to set sail with Jack Sparrow immediately. But something I praise about the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise is its ability to create its own world, this adventurous, swashbuckling time. And it feels so realistic, like you can see the big budget on the screen. But the epic feeling of these movies, I feel, would be missing without this blaring good score that just 
is unlike anything really. I mean, most big franchises have iconic scores, but Pirates of the Caribbean is so unique. There's these epic tracks that convey this feeling of love between Will and Elizabeth and At World's End. You've got the score that surrounds Davy Jones as a character. Obviously the epic scores that blare when like an action adventure scene is taking place. But all around the Pirates of the Caribbean music is like its own entity in the universe. It adds to the iconic nature of this franchise. So it would be disrespectful almost to be like, oh, I'm just gonna pick Dead Man's Chester. I'm just gonna pick the first film or just World's End. I gotta count all three because all three movies run together so smoothly and the score is a pivotal part of making these films as epic and memorable as they actually are. I'm cheating for my next two spots, so you're just gonna have to deal with it, but coming in at number six for me is the entire Harry Potter score for all eight films. Again, I could not just pinpoint one movie, I had to include all of them. John Williams is responsible for basically establishing a foundational score for this franchise with the main theme, which is up there for like Mount Rushmore of most iconic main movie themes. I think you'd have to throw Harry Potter in that conversation, but when it comes down to Harry Potter, much like I mentioned, with both Indiana Jones and Pirates of the Caribbean, this score is is synonymous with the world of Harry Potter. It adds to the escapism, the magical feel, and I genuinely don't think the Wizarding World would have that same charming appeal and, and sense of escapism magic without this score that just adds so much. It could be a simple scene where they're walking through Diagon Alley or Hogsmeade, even Hogwarts. The score just enhances everything and it, it creates this almost emotional connection with the characters in the world in a way where it immerses us into this story and makes the world even more believable than it actually is. That's why I think the Harry Potter films have that feeling of escapism that's unparalleled compared to a lot of other franchises because of the score. The main Harry Potter theme is clearly iconic, but there are so many other countless tracks that accompany these simple dialogue driven scenes between characters and they just add to the heart of the franchise. I could go on and on. And I think the Harry Potter score is also high on my list because if you ever go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal, um, you walk around Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley and there's music playing constantly. You know, if you're waiting in line for a ride or if you're just walking around in stores, there's this music just playing constantly, creating this atmosphere of magic. And those tracks are almost permanently planted in your brain as you're walking around. So whenever I hear the Harry Potter music anywhere now, it transports me not only to the film world, but also the theme park. Number five could have some recency bias to it, but I really don't care. We've got Oppenheimer. This is the Ludwig Göransson score from the latest Christopher Nolan film. I have not been able to stop listening to this thing ever since it came out. Whether that is me putting the score on my headphones when I lift weights or go for a walk or even driving around my car, I can't get it out of my brain. It is a masterful score. Of course, if I'm scrolling on social media, every other video will have the Can You Hear the Music tracks. That's obviously one of the strongest from the film. But the thing about the Oppenheimer score is obviously it adds the intensity of certain scenes like the Trinity test scene. I mean, the score makes that scene what it is, I would argue. But there are certain tracks that convey emotions between between characters, whether that's Kitty and Robert Oppenheimer, or even, you know, at the end of the movie, it becomes sort of a courtroom drama. The score there propels those scenes forward, I would argue. The score has also got this hauntingly beautiful quality to it, much like the actual movie itself. Like, as well written as the final moments of this film are, it would be nothing if not for the Ludwig Göransson score that accompanies it. That's what elevates the ending of this film, and honestly elevates not only this Nolan film, but a lot of other Nolan movies, is how damn good the score is. It leaves an impact on the viewer and enhances the overall quality of the movie, acting as a character, which like I hinted at earlier, is a huge reason a score makes my top 10. At number four, I'm going with another Ludwig Göransson score, Tenet. There's nothing quite like it. It's like this new creation of all these sounds that I've never heard, and it's music to my ears. The main track that I love to listen to is Posterity. It's this 16 minute long epic track that will get you through any run or workout that you need to, but when I go and watch Tenet, I'm just amazed at how this score acts within the film because the movie itself is a very complicated idea of time inversion, people traveling backwards through time. It's like obviously hard to wrap your brain around because it's so foreign, right? It's this new concept and the score is very reminiscent of the plot of this film. It's this weird new thing that I can't help but be fascinated with and I want to continue to listen to because it's unlike anything my ears have ever heard, much like the movies unlike anything my eyes have ever seen. Tenet is a wholly unique movie that 
pushes the boundaries in terms of like big blockbuster action. I love it. I know a lot of people dismiss this and say it's one of Nolan's worst movies. I completely disagree. I've always loved this one. And the score is a main reason why. Like that highway action sequence with Ludwig Göransson's score, one of the most epic things I've seen on a huge screen. Like it was so awesome. But Ludwig Göransson made this list twice and he's a legend in the making. Number three on my list is the last time I'm cheating in this video. It is the entirety of the Star Wars saga. <laughs> I know that's like multiple movie so it's like really a cheat code but specifically the prequels and original trilogy is what I'm aiming at here. John Williams composed the hell out of this and of course if you're talking iconic main movie themes Star Wars might just have to be number one. That's a debate for another time. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on that are. But I mean you look at the prequel trilogy you've got Duel the Fates, Across the Stars, the entirety of Revenge of the Sith with Anakin's betrayal and Battle of the Heroes. All of those tracks have this distinct flair to them that you know makes Make scenes a million times more epic than they are. Like Kenobi and Qui-Gon vs. Darth Maul is obviously epic. The fight choreography is magnificent, but that score is something that just takes it to this otherworldly level. Then you've got Across the Stars, which makes an otherwise pretty dull romance actually feel like it has some heart to it. And then, of course, you've got the Revenge of the Sith score. My favorite track might just be Anakin's Betrayal, and that's during the Order 66 sequence, and that music just conveys this feeling of heartbreak and tragedy so, so well. Battle of the Heroes, obviously epic with the Mustafar duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin. And then you move into the original trilogy and my outright favorite track in all of Star Wars is the binary sunset that plays as Luke Skywalker is on Tatooine and he looks out and sees the binary sunset and realizes these are my two paths in life and, and what is my true meaning? And in that moment, he's a forever changed man. The Imperial March has become so iconic outside of just this franchise. And even the victory medley, which was actually added to the end of Return of the Jedi when the special edition came out, I prefer almost to Yub Nub, which is kind of a hot take. Final shot in Return of the Jedi, accompanied by the victory medley score, creates this overwhelming sense of joy and happiness, like just relief in a way. John Williams is a legend, no doubt, but I would probably argue his work on Star Wars is his best. He's been nominated for countless Oscars over the years, but I think Star Wars is really what most people would probably know him from. And shout out John Williams for making the galaxy far, far away so much more memorable and better. My runner up is the score for Christopher Nolan's Inception, composed by Hans Zimmer. The score for Inception adds to the immersive nature of the world. And the runaway best track on this soundtrack is Time. I have listened to that track a countless number of times, no pun intended. It's one of those where I'll listen to the soundtrack for Inception and it's got, you know, Dream is Collapsing and all those other tracks that are epic and really add to the stakes of the final act of Inception. But time is the one where you could put that over like a hype video or a motivational video and just really feel something. But in reality, I'll listen to this and it's almost like my life will flash before my eyes. I will envision what I've experienced in life, but also what's to come in life and my goals. And it's really almost meditative. Like if you haven't listened to the Inception score in a while, definitely pull up time right now after watching this video. And I think you'll probably feel something you've never felt before. It's an out of body experience listening to the Inception music and specifically time is almost why this is the runner up. But the number one on my list, Hans Zimmer yet again, Christopher Nolan yet again, it's the score for Interstellar. I battled with the placement of this list, and in fact, I made some audibles while filming this video, but number one has to be Interstellar for me, just because, much like I mentioned with Inception, it's this transcendent experience whenever I listen to this music, whether that is Cornfield Chase, Stay, Mountains, the list goes on and on. There are so many tracks from this Interstellar soundtrack that have me thinking about my life as a whole, and like, where do I want to go in life? What do I want to achieve? It's like therapy, listening to the Interstellar soundtrack. It contains some of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard composed, but on top of that, it makes Interstellar that much better than it already is. The Interstellar soundtrack is a masterpiece. I think most people would agree it contains some of the best music ever composed for a film. It takes the cake for me just because, much like I mentioned with, you know, Tenet or Oppenheimer, not only is it unlike anything I've ever heard, but it never fails to give me chills when I listen to this. I can be watching the movie and obviously it enhances every scene, but when I listen to it on its own, I could apply it to so many different situations and it will make them better. It could get me through tough times physically or mentally. It's literally free therapy listening to the Interstellar score and all around this movie is masterful, but the score 
is really the biggest strong point for me. But that does it for my top 10 favorite movie scores of all time. This is just at this moment in time. These is a constantly changing list. I just wanted to give this out there because, hey, I have never made this video somehow. That's crazy, right? Well, let me know your favorite movie scores in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel. It'll mean a lot. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>